From Barangaroo Studios, this is the COB, brought to you by eToro. Invest in ASX shares with $0 commission. Hello, hello. This is the COB, all the stuff you need to know about the day in business and markets. I'm Nadine Blaney, here I'm with... Danny Akuye. Yeah, Danny Akuye. So, Danny, pretty yes. good day out there. Up by about a six, of, uh, six tenths of a percent. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. Really, really strong. And uh, it was across the board. I'm just checking. The only sector that didn't perform, utilities. Mm -hmm. But we have the Infotech up 2% following NASDAQ. Big lead over there. And the financials up one and a half percent. So really a great performance. The last couple of days, it's like the little rocket has been put under the markets. Well, and there's a little bit of a relief rally, I think. That's one of the themes that yeah. I called out today. Because of this debt ceiling negotiations, yes. they seem to be going relatively well, let's say that, in the United States. Also, I think a bit of relief that we haven't seen any further blow-ups in the U.S. regional banking totally, space. Totally. And the data has been supportive of, you know, well, I mean, here, potential, uh, potentially a pause coming from the RBA. So look, we've got this relief rally happening here. We've got uh, the retailers, though, one to watch. I had a lot of conversations today yeah. about retail, particularly in the wake of Dusk's update, which we'll detail in just a moment. Um, and then I just put on there for interest's sake, a yeah, bit of a Nick party favor. The Nikkei. Yeah. I know. It's amazing. It's amazing. Well, only because I lived through all the disasters at Bearings, who were mm -hmm. the you know, number one warrant trader in the Japanese market. So when it crashed, like half of the floor disappeared. So now after 33 years, the Nikkei is back. It's back, baby. Yeah, which is amazing <laughs> because everybody just wrote it off. I guess for those long standing shareholders, it must be such a relief. Yeah, so it's closed up today over, well, pretty close to eight tenths of 1%. I'm a bit sad though, we're just reading about a magnitude 7.7 .7 quake off New Caledonia, so triggering a tsunami oh. warning for much of the South Pacific. And the so beautiful Lord Howe Island, which is just exquisite. Mm -hmm. So let's hope that's not too bad. All right, mm. well, I've not been, but hopefully we'll get there soon. So look, um, back to what's happening out there today. So Austal did really well at share price soaring. It won a massive government contract, contract with yeah. the U.S. Navy. So uh, when we look at the corporate stories for today, that one's up on the list. Also on the list, Core Lithium. So it has spent a bit of money up at one of its mine sites oh, in it? the Northern Territory. Yeah, and uh, lithium was such a theme last week. You know, there's still lots of conversation. Just today I hosted the call. And, um, you know, still people write in about all these, you Ooh. know, wanting to get an opinion on, you know, whether it's big or small. I will give it away. My guests, Daniel Ortiz from The Stock Doctor and June Beilu from Tribeca, they said, stick in the bigger end of town. You know, they didn't really like the small end. It's Pilbara and it's IGO and those types of names. So, so that's a couple of stories. And then we've also got on our list, Dusk. Yeah, what's happening with the candles? And, well, <laughs> they're being blown out, apparently. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, a downgrade coming through from Dusk. Had a good chat with Andrew Page mm -hmm. from strawman.com mm, about this one. Chatting, yeah. um, oh, just, my God, yeah. 17%. That yeah. is painful. Yeah. Wow. I think it, it's a record low, actually, for wow. for the company. So, I mean, it's 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 he's, his point was, like, this is peak discretionary, right? You can yeah. live without a candle. Yeah. Um, but he said there will come a time that these retailers get interesting. And you'll want to go and find that uh, episode of the uh, Small Caps online because he goes into, you know, what sort of conditions would need to be in place before some of these companies? Because we also had best and less mm. this week downgrading as well. So yeah, that's worth a listen. And I guess too, post, you know, coming out of lockdowns, we probably all bought so many calming candles, mm -hmm. you know, and it's still feeding through. We're probably like, I've got lots of unused ones. Yeah, well, I know what not to get you for Christmas then, Danielle. <laughs> Thank you for that tip. Zero, getting all those upgrades in the wake yeah. of those FY results. I spoke with Elise Kennedy from Jardin today. She said zero disappointments really in the result, but worthwhile again to go online. Actually, I'll put it in the COB newsletter as well. Um, just to hear, you know, where some of the challenges do lie, what we want to know from this new CEO, you know, if enough is being done on the cost front, etc. Mm, and I think Flight Centre um, weren't one of the founders yeah. were selling a few shares, but obviously, you know, they're not not too faced. I always think that. Um, Sometimes when founders sell shares, people forget that these people need to de-risk. 
it's not always about their company not being worth investing yeah. in, but sometimes they want to buy a house or they want to do something else. And it's not always a complete negative. And I would say with Flight Center, I mean, it's not as if this is a five year old company. It's not no. as if the founders <laughs> haven't been with it for a long time. So exactly. we're going to give them a pass on this one, I think, Danny and I. Um, but I thought Flight Center was worthwhile just to lead us into the stock of the day. Yeah. So I said I hosted the call, picked Qantas because Qantas said that it's opening up millions of seats. Also, Qantas gives a bit of an update on May the 30th, mm -hmm. which could be, um, you know, really insightful. So anyways, it was our stock of the day. Let's listen into what our guests had to say. What's coming in the next 12 months or next 18 months or even next few years, they need to refresh their, uh, their fleet. They need to refresh their um, their their flights. Um, they need to spend a lot of uh, capital expenditure on those new flights. At the same time, they probably need to improve, um, you know, staff availability, uh, improve some of the uh, issues that uh, or some of the issues they had in the last four months. So, look to me, Qantas has done incredibly well for investors. I'll be taking profit. from our perspective. The, the best days are probably just behind it. If not, you know, within the sex, next six months, um, that will be coming to an end. So we'd be happy to rotate. I just thought I'd clarify. So both of them like the travel yeah. space. Mm. They just would not pick Qantas. They said, you know, take your profits, cash out and put it into, and they actually named a couple other companies Ooh. in the travel space that they would put their money in, but I'm not going to give it all away <laughs> here. You'll have to watch that episode of the call or on our website each day. I don't know if you know, but we put, you know, the extended version mm. of stock of the day up there. So it's a really great resource. You can sort of click through and um, get, the, get the, the meaty bits of uh, the stock of the day calls on the call. Absolutely. Okay, let's bring in our guest, shall we? It wouldn't be a Friday if we didn't see Shane Oliver from AMP Capital. Shane, welcome. I Forgive me, I've not read your note today yet. What, what's the headline? <laughs> well, uh, there's lots of headlines today. these days. Um, I mean, a lot of the focus is obviously share markets. You know, we've had a bit of a, a rally this week, which is impressive, um, partly on the back of the uh, uh, you know, positive news regarding the debt ceiling, although there's a long way to go on that front. Um, but I, I still think we've got a bit of volatility ahead of us over the period ahead because um, those recession risks in the US are still there, still pretty high if you look at the leading indicator overnight and the weakness in business surveys. Um, so, so that's obviously a big concern. But the other interesting thing that I did note was that my or our leading indicators for inflation in the US and Australia are continuing to fall. In fact, the US leading indicator uh, for US inflation had another dip down in the last week, which I think is good news because like in Australia's case, our indicator is coming down almost as fast as it went up. And so I suspect that central banks will be surprised on the inflation front. So on the one hand, you've got these worries about uh, uh, share markets being vulnerable to a recession. But on the other hand, I think central banks will have the flexibility uh, later this year to ease um, and inflation will recede as a problem and then ultimately will will set up a more durable recovery in share markets uh, as we go into next year. Yeah, Shane, that's really, really interesting because um, I have, you know, spoken to a couple of other economists and they're very much firmly in the higher for longer camp. So it's really interesting that, you know, you have a, a different perspective. Um, can you shed some light? Um, because everybody is really, including the Fed, the Fed is apparently totally fixated with indicators that seem to be, you know, lagging. Your US pipeline inflation indicator, what is it capturing that is indicating that the inflation is moving down? Just so people have a better understanding, because the Fed speakers, I mean, every night, another one mm. or two or three <laughs> are rolled out to talk about June possible June rate hikes. Yeah, it gets a bit depressing hearing that over and over. <laughs> uh, I, I do worry that central banks are focused on what economists would call lagging indicators. So inflation always lags the economic cycle just like the jobs market does. Uh, if you want to get a handle on things which lead, you've got to look at business surveys, you've got to look at uh, consumer confidence, uh, approvals to build new homes, 
um, the sort of things in the US leading index, which came out overnight and saw another fall and is down 8% on a year ago. Now, that, that's telling us that it's quite a sharp slowdown in growth coming and ultimately that will translate into lower inflation. But looking at the inflation numbers won't give you any guide to that. So what we did with our, our leading indicator or our, our pipeline inflation indicator, we looked obviously at commodity prices because they were a big factor behind the surge in inflation a year ago. Uh, we looked at uh, PPI, producer price indexes, uh, and, and we find the China one has a good lead over that and the China uh, producer price inflation is down negative. We look at uh, business surveys. So if you look at what uh, we focus on, what we call the PMIs, uh, which are global business surveys, uh, and they give you uh, readings regarding uh, input costs and output costs. And of course, this week we got more updates on that in the US with the Philadelphia Fed and New York Fed uh, regional uh, manufacturing surveys. And both of those, interestingly, show uh, uh, prices received running around levels that we saw as normal prior to the recent surge in inflation. Uh, so we put all those things together. There's a few other odds and end, ends in there as well. Uh, and it does include indicators for services uh, inflation within those surveys as well as manufacturing. So it's not just manufacturing. Uh, and of course, those things gave a good lead on the rise in inflation going into last year. Of course, we unfortunately weren't as focused on them as we should have been at the time. Like many economists, we're focused on on uh, coming out of the recovery, coming out of the, uh, the lockdowns. Um, but yeah, yeah, just as they gave us a good lead on the rise in inflation, they're now giving us a good lead on the downswing. And I, I put this, the, the US one up on Twitter a lot, and people would say, oh, look, Shane, you've been saying for a while now that US inflation is about to peak. Uh, but, but just bear in mind, US inflation did peak back in uh, June last year, a uh, long time ago now, just over 9%, and it's now fallen, I think, now below 5%, so and probably more downside to come. So th the key was to sort of look at things which give us a good light lead over inflation and put them together in some sort of quantitative fashion. And that's what those indicators do. One thing that's not in there is money supply growth and money supply growth surged through the pandemic as governments spent big to keep people alive and keep their economies um, you know, in reasonable shape for when we come out the other side of the lockdowns. And central banks partly finance that indirectly via printing money. Uh, so money supply surged and now money supplies collapsed. So if you're a, a monetarist and you follow that, then you'd have to say that uh, it's now pointing to lower inflation ahead as well. Okay, Shane, um, there's a lot in that. So we'll just leave that one there. Mic <laughs> drop, you did a good job of explaining that. Now, week to date, it looks as if the Aussie share market will be up about three tenths of a percent. Like we said today, it was you know, mm. a strong day. Um, so if we do see this debt ceiling issue resolved next week, do you reckon there's still a little bit of a pop you know, there's still a little bit of a pop in that. Does that then mean that markets continue to track higher? I mean, the, the Nasdaq is up like 25% year to date. Where's the vulnerability here? Well, I think, yes, we would get a bit of a pop. People would say, well, you know, that was the biggest threat you know, that they're, they're worried about at the moment. And that would uh, probably elicit some buying activity if we do get good news over the weekend on some sort of framework deal or in the next few days anyway. Um, only problem is that any deal, I think, will involve spending cuts uh, relative to what otherwise would have occurred. And uh, and also, this gets very complicated. I know it's not good for a Friday, so I'll end up going down a similar path to I went, I went down with inflation in China last week and you get tangled up. But um, just think about it this way. The, the Fed has a bank deposit. Sorry, the US Treasury had a, has a bank deposit at the Fed. So it's sitting there out of the system. Lately, they've been drawing on that to keep the US economy going. That's pumping money into the US economy. Once the debt ceiling is increased, uh, they'll start rebuilding that. Um, they'll be issuing debt again, and that will suck money back out of the US economy. So the liquidity boost to US shares, which have benefited particularly the NASDAQ, uh, might start to reverse. So short answer is, yes, I think we might get a bit of a pop on the good news, uh, but the market will then go back to worrying about slower growth ahead. Uh, Fed hikes, maybe Fed going too far, and also this the potential cuts to government spending um, coming out of any deal. Oh, Shane, that was uh, fantastic. Um, I love the fact that you seem to be an outlier with a few other luminaries, dare I say, in terms of disinflation or, you know, inflation coming down. Great wrap up, as always, on a Friday afternoon, and we really appreciate you coming on the close. Of the COB, okay. sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> Dress her up, Kev. Bring her anywhere. All right, Shane, see ya. Look, um, I will hey, call week. him Bye. illustrious. And he, what was your luminary? Of, luminary. He is so good. He is um, so good. Love yeah. ending the week with Shane yeah. Oliver from Capital. We're very Capital. privileged to have him on. I think every Friday. I think so too. Um, Leaders and laggards will be back with those in a tick. So uh, I wonder what will pop up on this list if it's companies that we've already <laughs> discussed. Um, let's take a look at these market leaders. Well, brain chip holdings, Danielle. Yeah. Like, I wish it's I on no news, right? I, I I must admit I am not across why that's up nine percent today. It's on no news. That's the thing no, with brain chip. Yeah, you just know? running. It is so up nine percent. Some people call it a story stock. I don't want to get anybody insulted out there in the audience who is a real believer. But um, yeah, you see this really, you know, these really sharp swings in this company yeah. and sometimes there's not a lot behind it as far as I can see. Imugene, now it did get the nod from the FDA. Yeah, it looks like that, just pulling it up. They had an investor webinar, FDA IND clearance um, on Car Carl Carlytics. On Carlytics. Yeah, so that probably boosted that share price yeah. by about six and a half percent. And we touched on AUB, didn't we? That big contract, and they also had a they they had a cap placement. Race? Yeah. yeah, I think they had uh, a placement, and that was very, very successful. And uh, I noticed that um, I think Gemma Dale said a lot of the the traders had sold their zero yesterday. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. Yeah. A bit of profit taking, but yeah. then um, sorry to always harken back to the call, but you just you know you remember these things when you have these good conversations. But um, Jim Bay was saying like. You know, it, it never should have got the share price as low as it did. Yeah. Um, but she's pretty comfortable buying. Um, you know, even around these levels. So up by 5.4 percent, the brokers seem to be giving it the big tick of approval. And Polynovo up by 5 percent. Not sure if there was no. news associated with that one. Um, look, it's a bummer to have to look at the laggards because sometimes <laughs> it hurts if they're in your portfolio. Um, but Whitehaven Coal. So this is this is very much a coal story. Uh, resources story yeah, more than anything else. Yeah, and as well. That's also down. So I haven't checked. I did notice that the iron ore price was slipping again in Singapore. So we've had a bit of a rally in iron ore. I think it went up to $108 a tonne, but it's been dropping back down. And possibly you're seeing some profit taking there in the coal companies um, as well. If iron ore is slipping, maybe the coal prices are slipping as well. Yeah. New form, well, that rallied so strongly mm -hmm. yesterday. So obviously some profit taking coming into that one. Uh, but uh, yeah, and then West African Resources down about 3% and DeGray Mining about 2%. So no, no surprises, you know, there's a lot of rotations and profit taking occurring um, after some mm -hmm. of these stocks had run. Um, look, we'll look at some of the small to mid cap companies as well. And I just thought I'd mention because we haven't really talked about it, but there's green technology there on the list. So mm. green technology metals. So LG Energy is investing $20 million ah, in GT1 yes. equity. So in green technology equity, it's 0 0.92 cents per share. So 92 cents per share. So um, green technology will sell LG 25% of its spotamine concentrate production from one of its mines for five years. So it's an equity subscription agreement and an offtake term sheet with uh, LG Energy Solutions. So that's done really good things for its share price, but I think it also goes to that bigger thematic mm. about M&A, mm. you know, um, absolutely. in all of these little lithium companies. Yeah, absolutely. And we actually had EY in to discuss a big new decarbonisation report that they have and how, you know, Australia is so well positioned mm. with all these resources. There's a great chart in there where it shows you how much lithium is needed by the world by 2040 and how much Australia has. So worth checking it out. All right, so that's up online, is it? Or it will be soon? Yes, I'll tweet it. Okay, good. Um, in Panamed, so it raised capital, rhythm biosciences. It absolutely went ballistic earlier in the week after it got a nod of approval from the UK regulators. I think we can leave that there on this Friday afternoon. Look, we still do have, you You mentioned that conga line of, of Fed speakers. Well, guess Come what? On. It continues tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we've got more. Yeah, we do. Oh. So we've got uh, Fed Chair Powell actually speaking. He's speaking wow. on the same stage, I think, as Ben Bernanke, former Fed Chair. But we've got New York Fed President Williams, Fed Governor Bowman, all speaking. So they will be talking 
Rate some data. Yeah, setting the stage possibly for uh, what we'll see in June, even if it's just, you know, just putting a sprinkling out there that maybe we might raise rates. Next week, I just thought we'd take a look at the week on the macro front. So we've got retail trade. That's not till Friday here in Australia, but we get the global PMIs. Yep, that'll be interesting. Um, the FOMC minute, so yep. still lots of Fed talk. And then the RBNZ. Mm. Yeah, so. and they've been very aggressive, mm -hmm. haven't they? And their economy is, yeah, really struggling. Oh, but yet again, we're going to have another interesting macro week. And Technology One reports next week, which I think for some people will be, you know, very interesting. Yeah, Technology One reports next week. Oh boy, I think Telix Pharmaceuticals oh, does, Webjet wow. does oh, in that travel theme yeah. as well. So I love it when we've got some corporate stuff to hang our hats on Absolutely. as well. As we leave you on this Friday afternoon, look, as we said, great day for the local market, up by and we're six all in green. Percent. This is, we've got like an Australia thing going on. And I feel like I should put my chairs down. On Friday, I wore denim, which I never do. Oh, no one can see <laughs> You're it. You're all dressed up in your skirt. We'll leave that there. I hope you have a great weekend. You too, Nadine. We hope you have a great weekend as well. If you've missed anything from throughout the week, which I'm sure you have, you can always catch up online over the weekend. We'll see you Monday. Bye. The COB is brought to you by eToro. Invest in ASX shares with $0 commission.